in occupying mind share of CPOs to drive this agenda. Spending a minute on what digital transformation is all about, right? So what's disruption? Uh, it's not a change in SAP. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it's, it's different things to different people. But I just put this chart up to sort of explain what you keep hearing about every day in the newspapers and in different forums. There are existing technologies, which is social, mobile, antical cloud. And these are scalable today. These are, uh, you know, these are, uh, these are commonplace today. Uh, but it's still surprising that we come to a conference of supply chain technologies. Uh, and you start looking at Twitter. And uh, I think apart from the organizers and, and some suppliers, there's nobody on Twitter. Uh, how many of you are on Twitter? And how many of you uh, understand how to use the Twitter handle? OK. But if you just go and look at the Twitter handle, uh, that's ELS2017, I think they're less than 50 posts today. So a known technology, a known social platform, even is not yet adopted by the community, which is, let's say, progressive, and has come to a seminar to talk about technology you know, in this forum. And then there are emerging technologies. Uh, you know, I, IoT, IIoT, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, we heard about them in the morning. Uh, blockchain, uh, that's the most uh, recent buzzword. Uh, we're still far away from that. 3D printing, drones, robots, artificial intelligence. So these are all of the things that are thrown to you. And I'm, so, I'm sure some CFO comes up and talks to you and talks about how can we use these technologies that Amazon is using or Uber is using to sort of dramatically uh, change the way you're doing things, and you wonder how. And this is the choice that CPOs face. A lot of different directions, a lot of uh, uh, you know, uh, technologies available or talked about in the newspapers. I don't think you can open a business newspaper today which does not talk about either valuations or cost-driven, uh, cost out because of technology or a dramatically different way of addressing a problem. And they're wondering how to approach this. And what I'd like to share in the slides ahead is these six methods. So one, kick off, where do you start? Second, approach, where is value going to be created? Third, looking at talent. Um, technology doesn't move without talent. It's still your own procurement teams, your own supply chain teams that need to adapt this technology and change the organization. So how does talent play a role there? Supplier collaboration and new sources of value, and lastly, ending with some key challenges. Three things that are essential to start. One, invest. Invest in a team. Invest in someone who can lead a team and give them a budget. I think we can all talk about transforming digitally, but where the money is placed is where things get done. And where accountability is there is where someone has responsible. So Reliance has invested into you know, a couple of people. I have a small team of five, six people who are looking at uh, you know, this being their primary aim. So we don't have a day job which is driving a supply chain or managing logistics or looking at fulfillment. All we're looking at is how to add a layer of technology you know, over our processes and systems. Um, what we've done here is to staff this team um, with a mix of people. Uh, mix is people who are experienced in analytics, people who are experienced in PNC and procurement processes, people who are mixed in technologies, so that, you know, that combination of that makes it possible for us to implement, uh, you know, a solution. Second, start a few projects. Uh, ideas are cheap, and um, with apology to, you, uh, no, to all consultants here, uh, grant plans are even cheaper. Uh, so every company has a big grant plan of how Uber did it, how Amazon did it, but uh, none of them are where they are today and as they had planned to be. So what I mean to say is each company started small in a certain area and built it as they went along with an overall vision. You don't start with an overall vision for the company without understanding what your resources are, 
how your talent will cope with it, how the ecosystem will behave, and then put that roadmap only to fail. But as you do that, start making a digital roadmap. And not a digital roadmap that covers the whole company, covers each aspect of technology, but whatever you understand through the POCs. That's the step we're taking. So we started with five projects at this moment, five POCs I would call them, uh, looking at uh, very crucially pain points, not vitamins. So now when you have a pain, uh, when you have a headache, uh, you don't forget to take that pill. But if someone gives you a vitamin D pill, which will, you know, it's a vitamin, will improve things, you may or may not forget to do it. So when you focus on projects, focus on pain points versus vitamins. Uh, what's that for your organization to discover that? And as we go along with that journey, we hope to write our digital roadmap in the next 12 months. Where's value created? So traditionally, if you look at supply chain teams, they look at price and delivery. Price of a service and delivery, whether it's delivered in time or not, and those are the two aspects they focus on. Uh, but digital rarely creates full value just in these two parts. If you want to extract the highest value for digital, you should look at total cost optimization. So bring in quality, bring in quantity, uh, bring in all the other aspects that lie you know, hidden, transparency, accuracy. I mean, the rates that, let's say, an Uber has negotiated or, uh, you know, what you've negotiated with a truck, uh, with a trucking company are very difficult to beat. I mean, you've done your best, you understand the cost models. So unless you can drive that new element of transparency, which, let's say, Uber has driven, you know exactly which point to which point you travel, you know the exact amount of time, you know the exact amount of kilometers, you don't save time. Unless you can, you can drive that new point of where that cab is just now, you can't drive utilization. And those are not traditionally procurement areas or supply chain areas, those are operational areas. So when you start looking at cost, look at end-to-end -end cost. And second to look at end-to-end -end metrics. Improving just one area, and I think uh, yesterday someone gave that example where or actually today morning, the person from Cap Gemini gave that example where each different department of supply chain was optimizing their own metrics. And yet, uh, you know, there wasn't anything tangible to either customers to increase revenue or anything tangible to the bottom line uh, to show higher profits and shareholder value. And while your digital intervention may be for a particular point and not for the whole supply chain, because that's what's manageable in a pilot. Look at an end-to-end -end metric that's being, that's being sort of improved. In talent, in talent, I'll urge you to look beyond skills. Uh, skills are very well understood by, uh, you know, our HR colleagues. Uh, you know, when you want someone for digital transformation, you'll sit down and write down the specs of someone in procurement, someone in technology. Uh, but this is what matters. A, if you, look in, if you can try to create a connected organization, um, if a digital transformation project goes through meetings and meetings and bureaucracy and approval layers um, with every sort of level trying to justify why that project adds value, I, I don't think any Uber or Amazon or any other company would have seen the light of day. Uh, it happens when you pull people together who are able to connect across different divisions and departments of organization and able to, in that connected way, come up with consensus around trying something out. Not, uh, not sort of uh, fixing the value of something or detailing a project, but creating consensus that this is something that they should start with and create value there. Second, agility. Uh, there's no time to be lost in a lot of things. Uh, you start with a project which, which let's say you start with a problem statement uh, where you think, uh, you know, RPA or robotic uh, process automation is going to support it. And you get excited about that saying that I'm going to figure out three or four use cases of adding value on RPA. Uh, but very soon you discover that these are not RPA projects, these are analytic projects, simple reporting projects. Uh, projects where you can put a simple 
you know, front and front of users so that they're able to make decisions. Uh, agility is required there to change your stance very quickly and saying my need, my project definition has changed and I am no longer trying to implement an RPA project but a simple descriptive analytics project as you understand the needs better. And third is to look at innovation. And innovation means chiefly two things. Uh, one, are you able to aim high? Uh, what's been done before, done elsewhere, copying it isn't innovation. And second, because you're aiming high, can you fail? Does the, does the company give you enough bandwidth and support as you try new things and fail? So can your leadership and HR create this climate where you let talent in your organization stay connected, stay agile, and do innovative things. The most important part in, in this journey is that uh, it's very vast. And what we're not doing is uh, working alone in silos, and you have to work collaboratively with suppliers. And I think that's where the challenge comes forth as well. And we have to be ready with all of these four different forms of working with suppliers. So A is the traditional method where there are suppliers here and a lot of them in this room who have solutions. Uh, so I don't think every company is cutting edge in every area. So there are areas where you're catching up with the world, where you're trying to look at a solution which has already been implemented maybe in a different industry but not in your industry or your type of company. And you're going to contract with that company and implement it. Second, they're going to look at creating a pilot. So technology exists. So GPS has been done by Uber, but has it been done in your industry? Uh, barcoding has been done by outbound supply chains. Has it been done in inbound supply chains? Right, so sort of pick up that same technology which has been implemented in different areas by successfully through suppliers, and then just work with them on pilots to co-create a solution for your particular industry. The third is very interesting. Um, a lot of companies, uh, you know, are driven by uh, profit and uh, selling a solution. So every big company that you go through, they have a sales team who has a very clear target, sell the solution. And I find, you know, some of the most innovative companies are startups who are looking to create a solution along with, uh, with, with, with a customer and not just, uh, you know, sell a solution because they have none. And they're trying to adapt a core technology to a problem statement. Uh, but obviously, uh, you know, you need some help to help them develop a solution. So in Reliance, we have a venture called GenNext. That's an accelerator program. Uh, what we try to do here is to, uh, you know, get startups to work with us in this GenNext and in, the, in this GenNext platform where uh, Reliance acts as a customer to some of those solutions. And the GenNext team actually helps them create that solution, bring it to market, uh, you know, help them price that solution, help them understand, uh, you know, where the market is in terms of collaborating with some other people to make that solution more robust or more complete. And the fourth, is as these mature, is to acquire some of them as, as you've seen a lot of companies doing. Very interestingly, as, as, as you know, supply chain leaders and procurement leaders take this digital innovation forward, uh, one of the sort of offshoots of that is that uh, wherever you deploy a digital solution or technology, it creates a lot of data. Um, and that data is being monetized by a lot of companies already in the B2C space. I mean, I'll tell you a very surprising example. Uh, a friend of mine was in the US uh, traveling in an Uber. And uh, he happens to be from IIT and in the tech space. And as he sits in, his, in, 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 in an Uber, he gets a pop-up saying, Uber is hiring technology people, and would you like to do an assessment? And you know, he's excited, so he does the assessment. So a couple of things, right? So Uber knew that he's from IIT, so there was some big data working in the background to figure out that he is the technology person. Very importantly, they knew he's in the US, so he could pick up a job with Uber in the US at some point of time. They knew he was free for 30 minutes, 
because that was his right time. And that is one of the most difficult things for recruiters to find time of a person to give the assessment. And using that information, they were able to complete an assessment and capture the right person. I do not think the recruitment team ever sees that as competition, Uber as competition to recruitment industry. So similarly, the data that you are generating through trucks and logistics, I mean, you have no idea what that could be and I think some of the brighter people among us will be able to imagine a use of that idea at some point of time. I mean, I heard of a company putting in RFIDs uh, into tires so that they know when that tire performance has gone down and they can be the first one to come and propose a business solution to replace those tires and sell more tires. So guard your data, uh, figure out ways to optimize it and that data could pay multiple times than what the solution cost in the first place and create business and value for you. And secondly, as you are going through creating solutions and piloting, because solutions are not available in the market, you could also create some IP. Uh, so some of the, I, I think uh, the person from uh, Dow Chemicals talked about an emergency response system, which those eight companies are uh, getting together to create. And I think that is an opportunity for them to create an IP of that solution in a unique manner which can be sort of leveraged by a lot of other companies which deal with hazardous material or hazardous movement or project cargo and sort of market it and earn revenue for that. So that pays many times over for the cost. So as you keep your radar open for cost reduction and efficiency, uh, there is a possibility of creating more revenues for your company and changing sometimes the business model of your company as well. Challenges. I'm going to end my, my talk with, with challenges. Uh, it's a long road ahead. Uh, if it was easy to do, then a lot of companies would be standing here presenting how they've done it uh, versus us standing here and telling you how we're planning to do it. Uh, there are three core challenges as I see here. One, are we able to accept failure? Uh, there are too many, the stakes are very high and there are too many people in your organization asking you, um, of, you know, has that solution proved itself in different circumstances? Uh, is it able to take, uh, is it scalable and robust enough, uh, you know, to manage the full scale implementation of that solution? Because, you know, all of automation and IT has been driven on the backs of companies like SAP or Oracle, uh, uh, you know, where the solutions are fairly robust. Uh, people are used to buying a packet solution with that big brand name and then driving customization around it. And most of the solutions that we put together through, through different technologies are bound to fail. And some of them will fail. So you can mitigate that risk by starting with small POCs, but is your company willing to walk that path of having a big dream, yet trying out a small project, and yet still sort of agreeing to fail or accepting that failure as part of the process? Second, are we, work, are we able to work across silos? Uh, I said ideas are cheap and, you know, every person has five ideas. So are we going to get lost in, you know, just claiming credit for whose idea it was and who drives that idea? Or will we work collaboratively across operations, finance, uh, procurement, fulfillment, stores, and actually create a solution that benefits the company? Uh, that, that time will tell. That's what is going to separate out uh, the companies that still stay in the S&P 500 and the ones that drop through. It's not the lack of ideas. It's the lack of how you're able to execute it through the organization. And the third and the most important, I think that you'd find exciting is that our company is going to just try to do it themselves. Uh, it's a long journey. Um, I think the whole uh, sense of digital and this economy has changed. It's open source, it's collaborative. Uh, but companies have been bogged down with competition, uh, you know, a shortage mentality, and uh, regarding everything as secret, and procurement departments are most to blame for it. Everything is secret, everything is confidential. Uh, so will we be able to work very seamlessly in a collaborative manner? I think that's the last challenge uh, that I see over here. And I think industry solutions will create more value, and we heard that through the day. It's 
I mean, most of the problems of logistics or supply chain are either pegged on why the industry doesn't work together on one common format, one common approach, or why doesn't the government do it? Which is, again, both pointing to solutions which are not within a firm, uh, but across different firms. And with that, uh, you know, I, I leave you with these thoughts, and hopefully you've been able to take something away from this presentation and uh, either work with it in your teams, in your companies to drive digital transformation, or understand the mindset of companies as you approach them as solution providers. Thank you. I think we've lost the moderator. Uh, any questions quickly till we wait for the moderator? Yes. If you can try to be loud, I'll repeat the question. Before, before going to that uh, 4.0, we assessed okay, we are in the base level. So initial studies we made First, we automated reports coming out from the Excel. So we made an automation process in digital from PR to payment cycle. The problem that we faced is that people, the change of mindset, because conventional organization, we are using a purchase orders, signing, it goes to the table to table. Now, in a single click, it goes to the vendor directly by the order authorization. How the problem can be overcome in people management in the digital process? Well, I think there are only two solutions to drive a change. One is uh, a burning platform. The day your industry is affected or your company is affected by profits or revenue, uh, everybody will change because it's no longer about what I want to do and how I want to do, but if I don't do this, I lose my job or some people in my company will lose the job. That's one. Uh, thankfully, a lot of us don't have that problem because India is growing at 7%. The second is leadership. Uh, but to share about our journey, we've gone through a four-year journey of driving business transformation, exactly what you said. 